Hey guys, my name is Christina and today I wanted to release a short little bonus video as a collaboration with Clip Studio Paint. In this video I'll discuss how I model a basic little key device that, with the help of shake keys, twists and turns revealing different key combinations. This little device will serve as the focal point for a story-driven comic strip utilizing the 3D tools in Clip Studio Paint. Alright, let's get started! So, full disclaimer, this is going to be a fairly straightforward and very simple modeling video, more geared towards absolute beginners. If you're more interested in the shape keys or Clip Studio Paint part of the workflow, Follow the link in the description, pinned comment, or the card to the top right to see the video on their channel. Okay, so to start I added in a cylinder with Shift A, and to get rid of the polygonal ridges, I right clicked and chose Shade Auto Smooth, which basically smooths anything below a 90 degree angle. I also added in a mirror modifier found under the little wrench icon on the right panel. Since I wanted to mirror the cylinder on the Y axis, I chose the Y. With the cylinder selected and Shift D, I'm able to duplicate the cylinder and place it where I want the two parts of the device to meet when it's closed. And finally, I start fleshing out the design some more. I had just a few inspiration references I was vaguely following when designing the device, one of them being the Da Vinci Code Cryptex, which I think looks really cool. I also generated a few telescope references via Midjourney, but I didn't really use those references that much. They mostly served as a reminder of the feeling I wanted to capture, although we purposefully chose to design something very simple as a way to demonstrate you don't need a lot of modeling skills or even animation skills to create a reference 3D model with simple shape keys for Clip Studio Paint. The three keyboard shortcuts I used the most was E for extrude, S for scale, and I for inset. I occasionally also use G followed by the desired axis to move a selection a certain direction. Whenever I wanted a less harsh edge, I selected all of the edges, and with Ctrl B, I added a little bevel. Notice that as soon as you add a bevel, a little menu pops up on the bottom left, and you can choose to increase the segments and other fun options. I'll speed up the footage, but a lot of this is just rinse and repeat of the before mentioned tools. Since I wanted somewhere for the character to hold the device while twisting the end caps, I added these little knobs at the end, but notice these would probably be way too small and uncomfortable to hold onto, so in orthographic mode, and with Alt-Z to go into X-ray mode, I selected the end caps and then scaled them. And that's pretty much it for the closed version. When starting to work on the inner cylinder, I chose to model this separately purely because I wanted to add a stylized modifier using Curtis Holt's Bygen, which is a free generative toolkit I would highly recommend. The first cylinder was quite easy to make, just add a loop cut and on the bottom left menu that pops up, I basically increased the number until I had squares covering the entire cylinder. Then, I would choose random patterns and use E to extrude that pattern outwards. In order to flatten the face selection, I had to change the transform orientation from global to normal and hitting S for scale and Z, I believe, I managed to flatten those faces. Or, if you really want to simplify things, you could install the free loop tools add-on which is shipped with every version of Blender. All you need to do is select the faces you want flattened, right click and at the top select loop tools and then flatten. These extrusions are basically going to act as a key combination that is meant to unlock this big door. And honestly, all I needed to do was to just repeat this workflow. Oh, 
Once I was happy with the general combinations, I would add another loop cut towards the top of each extrusion and continue to extrude and flatten. For this selection, since all of the normal faces are facing different directions, the regular E extrusion won't work, as that only extrudes along one axis and not multiple, so for this I used Alt E and chose Extrude Along Normals. There are a few other options you can choose, but for this you can see that it extrudes based on which direction each face is facing. I'll continue the time lapse a little bit longer. And there we go, that's our first cylinder variation. Now all I needed to do was to just find the right stylized sci-fi look from Curtis Holt's Bygen add-on and hit apply to selected. This adds a bunch of modifiers to our model and since I didn't want the model to deform, I basically just unchecked the displace. Yeah, there we go, that looks pretty cool. So I'll skip over showing the entire process for the second cylinder because it's basically following the exact same formula as this first cylinder. The only difference being a slightly different key combination, which again was completely chosen by random. But yeah, here's the final look of the second cylinder. Alright, are you guys ready to see the final page? This is where I'll conclude today's video, but if you want to see how I created shape keys using all of these models so they can be used as a base for drawing a comic panel, please check out Clip Studio Paint's video. Again, links in the description, pinned comment, and top right card. I think it's so cool that Clip Studio Paint has added the ability to now import models with shape keys. You used to have to have a rig and animation keys if you wanted to add a certain functionality to a model, but shape keys simplifies all of that and gives you a lot more freedom and flexibility. Plus, it's non-destructive, which is great. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye!